Hello there. Through this presentation, we are going to learn about transformational grammar. And more specifically in this, we are going to learn about two major transformations that is with reference to voice and with reference to degrees of comparison. Now, what is voice? Let us learn first and then we are going to see the transformations in voice. Now, what is voice? Let us look at this picture and the two sentences that are framed with reference to the picture. The first sentence, he robbed the bank. The second one, the bank was robbed by him. Both the sentences mean the same thing. But if you see here, both the sentences are also having the same time reference, but the structure has changed. What is the difference in the structure? Well, it relates to the verb robbed and this action showing whether the subject is actively doing it or the action is performed on it or by it. So that is exactly voice. So voice actually relates to the verb or the action and the sentence tells us whether the subject is actively performing in the active voice or it is passive and waiting for the action to be done on it or done by it. It is secondary in position. So let us see what is what are the two types of voice that is active voice and passive voice. So what is this active voice? In the active voice, the subject is one who does the action on the object. So the subject is active. While in passive, we find that the object and the action are highlighted. The subject is nowhere. The subject may or may not be written in the passive. So the subject is given a secondary place. All right. So therefore, the subject is passive. It is not actively involved in the action. Now, this is voice. Now, let's proceed to understand the rules of transformation. So, here there are two sentences that are already the uh, transformation is done. The first is in the active voice. The second is in the passive voice. How do you recognize that? In the active voice, the position or the structure is subject plus verb and the object. Now, this is the active voice. Now, let's see what happens in the passive voice. We can see that a letter is an object. But this object takes a primary position in passive voice and the subject becomes secondary. Okay, the last, it comes last. So it is subject. And look at what happens to the verb. The verb now from wrote, that's a past tense, becomes was written. Now was is the to be form. Is, are, was, were are the to be forms and written is the past participle. So here mostly past participles are used in the transformation to passive voice. Now let us summarize the rules of transformation. Now the rules of transformation go like this. First is there is a shift in position of the subject and the object. Second is there is the use of the to be form. Third is the use of the past participle. Always there is a past participle of the verb used. Then there is no change in the tense because the change in the tense is seen in the to be form. If it is wrote, it is was. If it was writes, then it would have been is written. So there's no change in tense and then the use of the word by. So these are the rules of transformation. The by may or may not be used. Now, if we have understood the rules of transformation, let us see certain transformations. See, the first one, he eats apples. Second sentence is he ate apples and the third is he will eat apples. So if you can see here, the first sentence is the simple present. He ate is the simple past and he will eat is the simple future tense. Now let's see what happens in the transformation. We are applying the rules now. Apples are eaten by him. So here, apples are eaten by him. Eaten is the past participle, but are is the present tense. Now, why is it are? Because it is eats in the simple present. So therefore, you have to retain the tense. First and foremost, first rule applied, there is a shift in the subject and the object. The subject has become him. Apples have become first. So there is a shift. Objects have taken the first place. Then 
R is used. It's a to be form and it is in the present form of to be. Then there is a past participle used, eaten. There is a word by written. Okay, so then we have followed all the rules. Here. Fine, so these are the rules followed. Now let's see the second one. He ate apples. So we have to shift the position of apples and he. We have to retain the tense of ate, which is simple past, and the tense is retained in the to be form. So let's see. Apples were eaten by him. So apples were eaten. So were it is because it is ate. It's a past tense. Eaten remains the same. If you see here. Past participle remains the same in all the tenses. So here this is written this way. Okay. Now simple future, let's see how it will be written. Okay. Apples will be eaten. So you begin with the object will be eaten. So eaten is the same but the to be form changes. It becomes will be eaten. We cannot write will eaten. So we write as will be eaten by him. So this is how the transformation is done with reference to simple future. Now let us look at the transformations that happen with reference to the next tense and that is the progressive tense. Look at the sentences in this. The first sentence is he is eating apples. The second one he was eating apples is past progressive then he will be eating apples is the future progressive. Now you'll have to be alert and this slide is going to test your alertness. Let us see if you can spot the error. Okay, now the present progressive I'll be doing properly. So let's see. Apples, okay, object comes first. Now R because apples is future, uh, is uh, sorry, plural. And R because it is a present tense and being ing goes to the B form. Eaten is the past participle. So the past participle remains the same. And now if you see, the subject has taken the secondary position. So now, present progressive form of to be, that is our being. And past participle of the verb eat, that is eaten. Now look at the second sentence. He was eating apples, past progressive. So how should it be actually? So apples, yes, it should begin with apples. Then it was was eating, therefore apples were because it is past tense and the to be form of eating. Okay, uh, the to be form of B. Okay, that is the ing or the progressive. But look at the sentence that is transformed. There is a mistake here. Apples were being eaten by him. So you should be able to spot the errors in the transformations. Now here, uh, please understand, it should be past progressive form of to be. So it is not are being, but it has to be were being and the past participle of the verb eat, which is eaten. Now let's look at the third one. He will be eating apples, that is future progressive. And here, how should it be then? So will be, will be there, were or he will be being eaten. Apples will be being eaten. Will it be that way? Will be being eaten by him. Do we really speak like this? Will be being twice be forms? No. So this is actually wrong English. So this is something that cannot be transformed to passive voice. Please understand this. It is not necessary that all sentences in the active voice can be transformed or need to be transformed. Okay, now let's go on to the next set of tenses, that is the perfect tenses. Present perfect, past perfect and future perfect. Now he has eaten apples, is present perfect. Perfect always takes the to have form. Okay, he has eaten apples. So let's transform that. Apples will begin. So apples have, because it is present tense, been, okay, have been, we have to put the to be form. So have been eaten by him. Okay. Apples have been eaten by him. So present perfect form of to be that is have been 
present perfect. So always have will be there. And then when have comes, you cannot have be. It has to be been. So past participle of the verb eat. So here how should it be? Let's see if there is an error. Apples. Is there an error? Apples. It begins with apples. Okay. Correct it is. So had. Why had? Because it is past perfect. Had and been. Eaten by him. So this is how it would be. Past perfect of to be that is had been. And past participle remains the same. It will be eaten. Now let's see how will he will have eaten apples. Let's see if there is a mistake here. He will have eaten. So apples will have been eaten by him. So is it correct? Apples, yes, will have been eaten by him. This is correct English and this is how it is done. Future perfect form of to be will have been and past participle of the verb eat. Right? So this is how all the tenses are done with the active and from the active to the passive. Now let us look at some different types of sentences. Look at this. Okay, First one. Break the stick. Now, this is what kind of a sentence? It is not a declarative sentence. It is an imperative sentence where it begins with a verb. Okay, so you don't see a proper subject here. So then how will you shift? Here you have to shift the object and the subject. But understand this, that there is no need because subject is given secondary importance in the passive voice. Therefore, how would this be written? Anyway, stick is the object. So the stick has to come. But you cannot say the stick break. So, we write it as differently. Okay. So, the second one, move the table here. This is another imperative sentence again. So, again there is no subject in second one. But there is an object, the table. But you cannot say the table moved there. So, how it has to be written? Now, let's see how it is written. These both are imperative sentences and they are written like this. Let, you have to begin with let. Let the stick be broken. Because you have to put the past participle of the verb break. So broken and the to be form so be. So let the stick be broken. So if you uh, make the second sentence, let the table be moved there. Moved is the past participle of the verb move. Fine. Let's look at another type. Okay, very easy to understand. These are interrogative sentences. Who ate the apples? And which boy started this? Alright, now in interrogative sentences also, why not? We can do it. Alright, now who ate the apples? And these are interrogative sentences. How do we write? The apples were eaten by whom? Similarly, this was started by which boy? See, this is the object, so it is shifted. It comes first. This was started by which boy? Okay, so this is how all the transformations are done with reference to voice. Now, let us see some things that we need to think about with reference to active passive. So the first thing is, can all active voice be transformed into passive? We just saw that if the English say technically we can do it, but then it is not necessary that we do really speak like that, okay? So therefore, not all active voice can be transformed into passive. Now, for example, she will be doing her work. See, this week we said it is wrong English. Her work will be being done by her. It is wrong English. My leg aches. Where is the object there? My leg aches. There's no object. So when there's no object, how will you do the passive? Okay. Then next question is, can all passive voice be transformed into active voice? Well, it is possible. But then we have to think. Now, for example, let there be peace for all. Let there be peace for all. Peace be for all. We can transform, but you have to put in a little bit of logic and do it. See the third question. Only the voice of transitive verbs can be transformed. Well, do we need an object for transformation of active to passive? Do we need an object? Because object is important. It has to shift its place. 
so only transitive verbs take objects so therefore remember this that yes it is true only transitive verbs are followed by object and therefore only those sentences can be transformed from active to passive those which have transitive verb suppose if i say he cut swiftly or he ran swiftly i cannot transform this into passive okay but if i say he cut an apple i can always say an apple was cut by him right so an object should be there and an object the verb that carries an object is always a transitive verb all right now the last one is can there be active and passive voice without a subject we saw that in an imperative sentence also the the subject that is is not there and then even in the passive voice by him by whom need not be specified okay so see this active voice open the door passive the report is written well where is the subject by is not there so therefore there is not it's not necessary that the subject should be there we can still transform the subject but if the object is not there we cannot transform okay so we are done with transformation of voice we now move on to transformation of degrees of comparison so let us see how it this is done we know that there are three forms of degrees of comparison or degrees of comparison is done with reference to adjectives as well as adverbs so how this is done he is a clever boy this is positive degree where it is just mentioning a trait mentioning a characteristic an adjective or an adverb he is a clever boy there is no comparison done as such sarin is a brave cadet she walks steadily see, see so you see her steadily is an adverb okay this offers not much comparison it just tells us about the existence of a particular quality but comparative in the comparative we have cleverer than other boys you have the er cleverer than other boys sarin is braver than other cadets she walked more steadily okay so this compares two things to show which has a lesser or greater quality okay which one one could be lesser or greater but you are comparing two different entities in superlative where is the comparison well in the superlative he is the cleverest boy in class which means the comparison is with of one with many sarin is the bravest cadet there is a comparison with many cadets she walked most steadily okay so again most steadily among some people all right so this compares more than two entities to show the least or the greatest degree of the quality so these are the three degrees of comparison now let's see how this is done whenever there is one syllable when you say a word and it comes as one syllable not two syllables one then it becomes like this large larger takes an r and est largest in the superlative calm comma er and calmest because it's just one go you say the word okay now but if there is one syllable ending with a vowel consonant vowel okay or a consonant then see this big i is a vowel g is a consonant so therefore bigger the g the consonant repeats and er just don't put b i g e r you put a double of the consonant and e r but of course it should be preceded by a vowel there should be a vowel here i is a vowel slim slimmer you can see how m doubles itself slimmer and slimmest okay then more than syllable ending is y more than one syllable now see more than one syllable how funny okay and fun me these are two syllables uh, funny and ending with y so then it will be funnier y becomes i e r and funniest i e s t merry merrier merriest okay more than one syllable now suppose here you see beautiful so here you see very clearly two syllables beautiful 
so it becomes more beautiful most beautiful intelligent intelligent so more intelligent most intelligent so you become it becomes comparative superlative this way more and most is put and then there are some irregular forms such as much more most good better best okay bad worse worst these are all the different irregular forms of degrees of comparison fine so now we go on to transformation of sentences all right now let's see how this is done what are the rules okay now first and foremost we have to understand very clearly the difference between the three positive is as it's just stated the quality is stated okay but you still state it using the words as and so right now here this is one versus either one or a group okay so when you're comparing one with one person or with a group then with many then it is comparative and if you are comparing one with many men with my, one with many many is absolutely essential for the imperative if it is not uh, for the superlative if many are not there then you cannot have the superlative so let's see here there is no dealer as smart as ravi see this as smart as all right so positive degree is written as 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 smart as then ravi is smarter than other smarter than and ravi is the smartest the smartest of all okay so positive takes as and as comparative takes the word than and superlative takes the article the the smartest okay and please note there is no change in the tense of the verb no change in the meaning of the sentence and key words have to be retained for example ravi dealers these are all key words and they have to be retained so now that we have understood the rules let us see some transformations okay now we have to use our brains here and logic here just as i had done earlier with boys let's see if we can know this the elephant does not run as fast as the cheetah does not run as fast as the cheetah so if i were to transform that as fast as is the positive degree let's see how to make it comparative which one is the right answer the elephant runs faster than the cheetah is that so or the cheetah runs faster than the elephant which one is the correct one well it is the answer b both are faster than but the meaning has to not change so therefore b is the comparative degree okay now let's see the next one can the sentence have a superlative the elephant does not run as fast as the cheetah so cheetah is the fastest with as compared to the elephant no it is wrong here simply because the elephant and the cheetah only are compared we cannot compare make this superlative in superlative one entity should be compared with many with a lot of others then only there can be superlative so it is a no next is other boys in the class are not as clever as he is so as clever as is a positive now other boys are not as clever which means he is cleverer than the other boys in the class and if we were to make it superlative he is the cleverest boy in the class because other boys are not anything compared to him okay now let's test you this is fine Nina is as tall as Seema. Okay, so now which one? Now as tall as is the positive degree. Select the correct answer. Seema is taller than Nina. Okay, or Nina is not taller than Seema. Which one would be correct? Is now suppose if we read the sentence Nina is as tall as Seema. What do you come to know? They are of the same height, or one is taller than the other? Well. i'm sure we know that when you say as tall as is as tall as means they both are of the same height then can 
three A be correct? Seema is taller than me now. No, it cannot be correct. Nobody is taller than the other. But B. Meena is not taller than Seema, which means they are of the same height. Meena is not taller than Seema because she is as tall as Seema. Okay, so remember the B answer is correct. So taller than is written in both. Yet the answer that is correct is the second. So let's take one by one now. Transformation of comparative degree. The people tree is bigger than the mango tree. So let's see the positive now. The mango tree is not as big as the people tree. Not as big. Okay. So you have to say that this is not big because people tree is bigger. Okay. So the mango tree is not as big as the people tree. The next one. The uh, the rose is more beautiful than some other flowers here. Few other, see some other flowers, no? So the few other flowers here are as beautiful as this rose. Okay, look at the third one. He is more honest than most policemen. He's more honest than most policemen. Most policemen are not as honest as he is because he is more honest than most of them. So most of them are not as honest as he is. Now the fourth one, it is warmer than all the other days of the month. Which means what? All the other days of the month, yes, or the other days of the month were not as warm as this day. Okay, so this is how we do the positive degree. Okay, let's see how to do the superlative. This rose is one of the most beautiful flowers. Okay. Why didn't we do the first one? The mango tree is not as big as the people tree. Why didn't we transform it into superlative? Simply because again I am repeating the mango and people only are compared. That is not a comparison of many. Okay, One with many then only you can have superlative. But the second one the rose is compared to other flowers. There are many. So you can do this rose is not the most beautiful flower. No, is one of the. It's one of the because it's written few other flowers. Are. Few other flowers. Are. So it is one of the most beautiful flowers. Means there are many other flowers which are beautiful and it is one of them. Okay. So is one of the most beautiful flowers. Please you have to write flowers because it is one among the flowers. Alright. Let's see the third sentence how it is transformed. He is one of the most honest policemen. Okay? He is more honest than most policemen. So he is one of the most honest policemen. And it is the warmest day of the month. Because the other days are not warm. So it is the warmest day of the month. This is how you transform comparative degree. Let's see how you, you transform the superlative degree. He is the laziest policeman. So, let's do the positive of this. He is the laziest policeman. No other policeman is as lazy as he is. Start with the no or none other. Okay? When it is superlative or positive. Kolkata saw the heaviest rainfall this year. So, no other year in Kolkata saw rainfall as heavy as this year. Okay? COVID-19 is the most infectious viral uh, ailment. So, no other viral ailment or there is no other viral ailment as infectious as COVID-19. You can also begin with no other viral ailment. Okay. She is one of the best. Please note, it is one of the, means there are many good dancers like her. But she is one of the best dancers. That means few others. Okay. Few other dancers are as good as she is in her. Okay, you have to understand the meaning. The comparison is: is there other? She is the the best or one of the best? So you have to underline, understand these. And now let's look at the comparative degree. In the comparative degree, you see the first one. He is the laziest. Means what? He is lazier than any other policeman. You compare him with any, you know, he is just lazier than anyone. 
in that. Okay, Kolkata saw the heaviest rainfall this year. How would you transform? Yes, this year Kolkata saw rainfall that was heavier than any other year. Look at the third one. COVID-19 is more infectious than any other ailment, viral ailment. And you see, we have to maintain the key um, uh, words here. Ailment, viral, COVID-19, all these words are important in these sentences. Okay, She is one of the best dancers in her troupe. So, how would it be comparative? She is better than. She is better, one of the best. So, you want better than, right? So, she is better than most, not all. Not all. She is not better than all the other dancers, no. She is better than most of the other dancers because there are some people like her who are really good. Okay? So, you have to under understand this. Fine. So, now that you have understood, let's summarize the positive comparative superlative rules. Alright? So, if there is singular... No other, there is no other, nothing. So, you can start like that, okay? Comparative will take like than any other, than anything. Means singular means that is the only person, the best, okay? This is the only person, then no other, there is no other, nothing. In comparative also, you can say than any other, than anything, okay? Now, the most, okay, of any other. Okay. Of any, the best of any. All right. So you write it this way. If that thing is singular, means it's the only thing that is the best or the superlative or whatever is the highest. If that is the only thing that's the best. Okay. So then the sentences are no other cadet is as strong as he is. So you will write it as nothing. He is stronger than any other cadet. He's the strongest of all the cadets. Okay. Similarly, look at this. The strongest you know, Okay. Then nothing is as tiny as this worm in the world. So nothing is as tiny as this worm. Nothing means that's the singular most. It is the only one. Singular means only one. This worm is tinier than anything in the world. And this worm is the tiniest of any other thing in the world. Okay. So this is how we have done using these examples. Now, let's look at plural, which means one among many. Fine. Plural means it's not the only thing. Singular was that is the only thing that is the best or that's the worst. Okay. Only thing. But here, there are many like that person or there are many. So, how would you use it as very few or some or few you would say. Okay. Then in comparative, you would write it like than most other or than all other, than many other. And superlative will be one of the best, okay? Because she is not the best. She is not singularly the best, okay? One of the. It is not singularly the most important, okay? There are many who are good or bad. That is the meaning of plural here. So, you see, very few speakers are as good as she is. Means she is one of the, she is better than most other speakers and then she is one of the best speakers. So, you see, we have given examples of each. Similarly, I have given example of the second type for false positive. Few dancers or some dancers are as wonderful as he is. Then, in the comparatives, you have used the word more wonderful than many other. He is more wonderful than many other dancers. And the third one, he is the most wonderful dancer among a few others. Okay, among few other dancers, if you wish to write. Okay, so if you look at this, this summarizes it. The first column, singular, means it is the only one, the best. Okay, plural means one among many. Alright, so means there are many who are like that thing, that are like thing. There, there are many who are like that person. Okay, plural would be, she is one of the cleverest. So there are many like her clever. That's the meaning of plural here. Okay, so hope you have understood this. Alright, so we are finished with the transformations. So thank you very much for your attention.